guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to be doing a little bit of work out here in the cut flower garden. Uh, we're gonna be harvesting, planting possibly, pulling some ranunculus corms that are spent, and weeding, mostly. Here's a look at what's going on. We're gonna be starting with our cabbage harvest this morning. Not all of them are ready, but we have three varieties here. Red Acre is not ready, I planted those last. We've got a variety called Crystal Vantage that's looking really, really good. Look at those beautiful cabbage heads. And then we've got a variety called tiara, which these are <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. Look at these. They just look like a picture, don't they? There's a few that look a little bit sad, but usually when you pull those outer leaves off, the inner part is really good. And then there's a couple that will leave and let form up just a little bit larger than they are now. And as we turn back this way, you can see our ranunculus. This was our first kind of crop right here. Anything that you see that looks more green, they're weeds. <laughs> the actual ranunculus are spent and they have pretty much soaked in the amount of energy they're gonna soak in at this point. So I would like to pull these because they are in the row closest to the driveway that we see the most. And I would like to get another crop of zinnias started. So that first flush of ranunculus and anemones ends, look, we've got some random snapdragons in here. <laughs> kind of fun. Uh, it ends about right here. And then this was the second flush. You can see that these have quite a bit more green on them. And we like to leave them until the leaves kind of just, you know, yellow and dry up, much like we do with our spring bulbs. So that, you know, the corms can just soak in as much energy as possible. So I had snapdragons in this row last year. That's probably why we're dealing with all these gorgeous blooms coming up. Over here, we've got gorgeous Walla Walla onions that are not ready to harvest yet. They're looking great and starting to really neck out down there at the base. And then this right here is kind of our third uh, go with anemones and ranunculus. There's a few flowers we can harvest in here, just very few left. And really the beginning of this row almost looks about ready to pull as well. I might give them a little bit more time. And then our dahlias over here, most of them, we had really good luck with them coming up. They're looking really healthy, uh, but I do have some potted dahlias in our greenhouse that I might pop into a couple of spots, a few spots actually, where we didn't have you know, one of the tubers sprout, which that happens sometimes. Overall, really good. A uh, few of these are gonna start blooming here pretty soon. You can see a whole bunch of buds on top of them. There was one section in particular, oh, right here. Look at that, that like nothing got two and from this stake to that stake which I think that's seven feet so I'm missing one two three four of the tubers didn't come up what variety is this small world dang as I'm looking around not many weeds going on in here but look at these hot and heavy peppers this is the one from proven winners they're just absolutely loaded not ready yet but amazing looking we do have quite a number of other peppers in here that are looking really good not ready yet, but getting closer. And then over here on this side, I really need to come in with some fertilizer and maybe we will do that today. I've got some seeds just starting to come up and kind of fill in here. Uh, we've got quite a number of glorious strawberries. Look at these, look at these, they're amazing. These are the seascape variety right here. Just planted this spring. Not all the plants have, have fruit, but I can see a bunch of fruit forming up. Looks like we've got some on this side. I think this is in the Eversweet category right here. Look at all those. And this is a good section right here. You can see berries, berries, there's berries in that, that one. Berries right here. And quite a number on that plant getting ready. Mostly foliar growth, it looks, on these. Okay, so we're gonna start with the cabbage harvest because most of those are heading to our local food pantry this morning. And typically they don't take donations on Fridays, today's Friday, um, but a gal is going to be there from about nine to 10. So I thought, ooh, if I can get them there between that time, that would be perfect. So I've got some crates here, and this is what I'm gonna be using to cut my cabbage off. So we'll get in here and do one of these. Maybe we do one of those. Hang on. I need two hands. There we go. Look at that gorgeous cabbage. So as I bring them over here and put them in the crates, I'm gonna go grab a hose 
so I can wash off any dirt that I might have gotten on the bottom and clean them up just a little bit. It's just about 7 a.m. right now. I'm actually trying to beat the heat and make the time frame too for donation drop off. So I'm just gonna get after this. I'll show you what the gator looks like in the end, hopefully full of cabbage. I've left my hose over here. My daily check of the uh, pumpkin plants too. No squash bugs yet. Beautiful sunrise. One heads of cabbage all cleaned up and ready to go. They look so pretty. And I've got two more up in our raised beds that I'm gonna go grab before we head out. guys we are here next chapter food pantry and garden <gasps> maybe we can walk through perfect awesome let's walk through this garden really quick she said that they got quite a late start which i think a lot of us did due to the weather this spring but everything's looking really healthy from what I can see. So in this bed looks like some beans and everything's watered with the half inch drip tube that has the emitter holes. It looks like every 18 inches, like the stuff we use at home. And then on the hoops, there's some tomatoes. There are, let's see, it looks like a tomatillo maybe right there and some peppers. And then more peppers in this bed, more tomatoes. More peppers, <laughs> lots of peppers. Peppers typically do really well here. Some sort of squash, what is this? Oh, it's an Armenian cucumber. Same right here. Looks like cucumber plants in this bed for the most part and on this trellis. Lettuce and tomatillo, lettuce in this bed. This is beautiful lettuce, look at this. Gorgeous. And it looks like quite a bit of the same. A lot of peppers, a lot of tomatoes. Those types of crops, the tomatoes and peppers, like versus greens and things, they just are so much easier to pick and store and probably distribute, I'm guessing. Looks like zucchini plants in this area here. Oh, yep, look at that. Some crookneck squash. And then a whole bunch of, I think, beets. Beets, 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 beets. That's what it looks like anyway. So it looks like four by four beds. And then these are four by, oh, I don't know. What do you think, 12 maybe? Pretty good size. And they've got a greenhouse back in the corner. What a fun space. You know, we usually grow extra. I had a ton of extra tomatoes, for example, this spring, and I usually never have a, a problem finding homes for them. Uh, you know, friends and family usually snap them up, but this would be a great place to bring some of our extra stuff. And that's the thing, a lot of times, um, like I know the Oregon Food Bank was not accepting home garden donations uh, once COVID happened, and I'm not sure if they have started to accept them again. I'm not kind of thinking not. I think their website still said that they didn't, but I know there's so many local food pantries that will accept donations. So just Google it um, in your area and see if you can hook up with a local place if you've got extra produce. Okay, we are gonna head back home and continue working. If I have my key. <laughs> 
We're back home now, and this is what we're gonna be working on next. So I do have a cabbage here that I accidentally dropped on the ground and it broke. So I didn't donate that one right there. We'll eat that one tonight. I've got some berry cups we're gonna harvest here in a second. And then I've got some seedlings that have just been languishing in the greenhouse. They desperately need to get out of their containers. Poor things. Ugh. And then I do have dahlia tubers that I saved in the root cellar should some of ours not come up. I was gonna put some of our pre-sprouted ones from the greenhouse out here, but on one of them, I noticed a tiny bit of what might be spider mite damage. Uh, I couldn't find any active spider mites on them, which is weird, uh, but I thought, you know what? I'm gonna really just keep an eye on these and not infect my entire patch should that be the case because spider mites are such a pain and if they take hold out here we're gonna have a big big issue so i'm glad i hung on to these and boy they're just doing great in the root cellar just hanging in there just growing away we've got the mahogany splendor hibiscus here thai double blue butterfly peas cup and saucer vines some straw flowers and some gomfrina there but this is exciting let's pick strawberries first i think i was a little delusional bringing out five cups <laughs> we'll fill up a couple maybe Holy moly. I'll save any damaged ones like this for the chickens. This will be the chicken cup. We got two cups for us. Aren't these gorgeous? The most beautiful, beautiful berries. It smells so good over here. And one small cup for the chickens. These were damaged or they had bug holes in them or they were overripe. So we'll go give these to them right now. Oh, <laughs> not gonna pick you up, Beverly. Hi. Oh my. Woo, holy moly. You two must be laying eggs in here, huh? Okay, don't peck me. Oh my mercy, my mercy, look at this. Thank you. Hi Bev, what are you doing? You got a beak covered in strawberries now. This is why I never mind sharing our produce with the chickens. Okay, we're gonna tackle the dahlias first. Here's what I'm gonna do. I know that, cause I've got these kind of color blocked here, these rows. So I know the first row is pink. So I've got one called Old Rose here. I'm just gonna find the location of ones that didn't come up. Let's see, that's Arbitax right there. And I'm just gonna kind of hand dig and pop the tuber in. Might even be able to find the old one. See what's going on here. didn't do anything yeah nothing all right well in this one goes just like that cover it over and it will be behind you know the rest of these but not by a ton now that it's so hot so now we'll finish the rest of the patch Dahlias are done. It didn't take me nearly as long as I thought it was going to. You know, as I was rooting around in here, um, around the ones that I thought I had lost, let me show you what I found. I wanna be gentle here. Yeah, look, it's growing. It's there, it has sprouted. There is a green growth. It just is behind the others. And that's what I found kind of throughout. 
We've had such a weird year for weather. A beautiful year, a lot more rain than normal, a lot cooler temperatures. Now we're getting really, really hot. So these should all explode at this point. And I already do have a home for the rest of the tubers that I didn't end up needing. So now let's just get the rest of these sad things planted. I think I'm gonna plant the mahogany splendors around the cabbage that are left uh, because while these are getting up and going, the cabbage will mature and I'll harvest that out kind of in between these because these get massive. These I'll plant on our sweet pea trellises and these I'll just find a little spot to tuck them in. get everything planted so the very last thing I want to do is dig the ranunculus and anemones that are ready but I thought I would show you where everything ended up first so point of reference there's the flower shed these are the two rows of sweet peas which are just now starting to bulk up and put on growth and bloom they're absolutely gorgeous so pretty I had about oh eight nine feet left on the end of this row with nothing uh, and I had already pre-drilled holes in everything a long time ago because I thought I had enough sweet peas to reach the distance, but I didn't, thankfully. So I planted the two Thai double blue butterfly peas right here. And then we've got the blue cup and saucer vine and Alba, the white cup and saucer vine. I probably planted them way too close together, but at this point of the season, I am not constructing another trellis for those. <laughs> and then next I came over here to the row where the nasturtiums are just coming up. Uh, the chocolate flower, both when I direct seeded it here and when I started it in seed trays, very poor germination. So I've got them hit and miss, like one, two, there's one down there. I mean, just very spotty. So I just came in with some of the white gomfrina and a few of the orange too, and just placed them in among the <laughs> chocolate flowers that did come up. So this will just be kind of a mixed bag area. I just didn't want to waste the space. With the remaining six orange gomfrina, I popped them right here at the end of the row of Cosmos. Some of them are coming up great. Like these I had from last year. These I had from last year too, the ones that are coming at, up at the base of the amaranth. I didn't realize, I thought when I planted the Cosmos that it was Celosia that was coming up. And I thought, well, the Cosmos and the Celosia will kind of maybe intermingle might be kind of pretty but amaranth gets massive <laughs> i'm kind of glad though because my amaranth seedlings in the greenhouse are so small compared to these this year i've just been letting things kind of go like wherever anything self-seeded from last year i'm just letting it come up even if it's like nearby <laughs> if it's in a row the row of something else um, i'm letting it come up as long as it doesn't impede the growth of something else so i'm keeping an eye on things like that like today when i planted the next thing which was the straw flowers there was an amaranth in that row but i didn't want that huge amaranth in there because they'll get like you know six to eight feet tall so I did pull that one out and that one was already like tw uh, two feet tall, but I have a uh, larkspur and uh, bells of Ireland, white finch orlea, um, a bunch of pincushion flowers, the, fe well, the fever few, yes, but the mignonette, um, all of those things self-seeded and just came up beautifully from last year, which is great. Also, a couple things I wanted to point out. These are carrots I let go to seed. Isn't it gorgeous? <laughs> I turned the camera around because I don't know if you guys can see all the pollinator activity. This is insane. 
if you want something that serves like all the pollinators, just let some carrots go to seed because, oh my goodness, I've seen, I've seen some bumblebees, I've seen honeybees, a bunch of different other bees I don't know the names of, and uh, like hoverflies, things like that, just all over. It's just incredible. Plus, I wanted to gather the seeds from these anyway. I didn't realize they would get this tall when they <laughs> went to seed. I wanted to stand down here though, so we could look at this row of potatoes. That's four rows right there. Four rows, roughly 18, 20 inches apart from one another. So that's 240 collective feet of potatoes right here. And they all look amazing. I did notice we're getting some blooms on some of these. I already harvested the red Norlands out of our raised bed and got quite a number. I was really happy with it. But I think we're gonna get really good yields. If the tubers are forming up anything like the foliage canopy is, we'll have good yields. Just amazing. There's the blooms on the German butterballs there. Okay, next spot right here was for the straw flowers. That's right where the amaranth plant was that I pulled up and then I cleaned up some celosias as well. Straw flowers aren't very aggressive plants in my experience anyway. I don't have an extensive amount of experience with them. But anyway, I think they'll do well here. They'll do a heck of a lot better than in their poor little container they were in. And then I planted the red mahogany, mahogany splendor, hibiscus. Amazing plant, you guys. I planted them a little bit closer together than maybe you should because it's so late in the season. Uh, these plants get like three by three, I think. Two to three feet tall and wide, I think. I mean, they're just an amazing presence in the garden. And I was going to plant some of these down at the college this year, but they just weren't quite big enough. And I thought, oh, they're going to get lost in, in how, you know, there's so much to take care of down there. Um, and then, uh, yeah, just didn't get around to planting them until now. So it seemed fitting to put them in the cabbage row. Shout out to Bethany. She helped me um, clean this row of cabbage. When I went down uh, and dropped off, dropped them all off this morning, she like whipped through here and cleaned them all out. Everything except for the heads that we're gonna let form up a little bit more. So awesome job, Bethany. I'm fairly certain the camera shut off midway while I was planting them and you can't see them very well right now because one, they are little and they're also dark colored. But these are used for foliage. You cut them for their leaves. They kind of would remind you of a Japanese maple, but they could take full sun and is more shrubby. It's amazing. I can't remember what growth, like growing zone they are. They don't survive in our zone six, but I planted them about every 20 inches or so, which again is closer together than you probably should. But you can see, look at these cute little heads of cabbage. Like that's actually perfect for a dinner for the four of us. So we'll use off of these here for a little while yet. This one's beautiful. Ugh. Anyway, so we just kind of went around the cabbages that are there and these will fill in. I have no worries about that. It won't really look like there's any holes in this row um, once, you know, those grow and these are gone. And then of course we have the red cabbage left right there. These dianthus have been really fun to grow. Aren't they pretty? Got some calendula coming up from last year. See what I mean? Like that calendula is doing like no harm to any other plant in this area. So, so long as they like mind their own business, I'm just leaving them alone. Okay, so this is our next project right here. We're gonna get all of these dug out. I brought my digging fork and the crates that we had the cabbage in. And I'll show you how we do this, super simple. So this one right here, completely yellow, starting to die back. So I just go in with my digging fork and kind of help ease it out of the soil. And then I knock as much soil as I can off. You can see, look at that. Beautiful corms there. So that one we planted turned into four. And then we're just gonna lay them in a crate to dry, kind of like garlic. I'm also gonna keep all of the, these are the marshmallow variety, which is one of my faves. So we'll keep all like varieties together. So we're just gonna dig them about midway to midway down, uh, just so long as they look kind of crummy like this, they're pretty much ready to dig.
And here they are. So five different varieties of ranunculus. Uh, there are five crates, so each crate has one variety in it. And then in the last crate, I squeezed the small amount of anemones I needed to dig, which, you know, these still have some green on them. I could have left them, but a lot of them had like just dried up dead looking stuff. And I really want to prep this bed, which I probably won't do right now, right this second, um, but will do in the next couple of days. So I'll come in and rake it like rake out all the excess stuff and I'm gonna leave the snapdragons. So that's exactly what I'm talking about. Last year I planted snaps right here and they just seeded a little bit in this space. So I'm just letting them come up and look pretty. We can cut those as well. And then we'll tackle the rest of the ranunculus and anemones when they start to die back a little bit more. So what we'll do at this point is I'm gonna leave these in the crates for a few days just to dry. Um, because there is moisture, you can cut the water to areas that have these um, a few days prior to digging them so you don't deal with moisture around the corms or the bulbs um, because you don't want to put them into storage that way. You don't have to really clean any of the soil off if you don't want to um, because I think it just helps them store a little bit better. Um, and you can divide them now or you can divide them later. And by divide, this is what I mean. So this right here is one clump. I planted one corm. Uh, and let's see how many it turns into. So there's one right there. And once the stems are 100% dried back, we'll um, cut them off right above the corm. You're just gonna be gentle with these. There's two, three, and four. So one, turned into four in this case, I will run into them on occasion that have like five, six, seven, um, when you've just planted one, which is awesome. So they're kind of like dahlias in that way, but they're much easier to dig and store by a long shot. And then kind of a close up of the anemones. They're more like little, um, they're almost like iris. You know how iris spread kind of by rhizome? You start off with one right here and then it spreads over and makes another one and so on and so forth. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna let them dry. In a few days, we'll come in, divide, or leave them in their clumps for now, and um, cut all the stems off for storage. And I will most likely bring you along for the process, if not with this batch, with one of the other batches that we have out in the garden, but it's really simple. We let them dry down for a couple of days. Um, I go in, cut the tops off, just clean them up in that respect. And then sometimes I'll divide them at that point. Sometimes I'll wait till spring, it doesn't really matter. And we just stored ours, uh, we stored them two different ways last year. Uh, one way was just to put them in a saucer, just uncovered by anything. And we had them in the root cellar and they did beautifully. The other ones we had in, I think, was it some kind of a, like a wood chip or something like that? It was some kind of sawdust maybe? I can't remember. Anyway, it was in some kind of a medium just to maybe see if it kept a little bit more moisture in, but it really didn't seem to matter. They both stored beautifully and grew beautifully for us this year. And they're just such a low maintenance, kind of hands-off crop, really. I mean, you could start these early too. They're typically more of a cool season crop and uh, they did last longer for us this year because we had such a cool spring. Uh, and I might try growing some in the greenhouse, the heated greenhouse this winter. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Maybe we'll start some like late summer, see what we can do with them. Anyway, that is going to be it for today. Kind of a mixed bag of projects out here, but it really is a fun time to, uh, I don't know, just tackle some things and see fresh crops coming in and all of that. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.